can I please go through this stream today without uh, broadcast interruptions every couple minutes or something? Please. I'm getting sick and tired of it. I, I am really getting sick and tired of it. <sighs> hey, anyway, here's where the stream pretty much cut off. So, as usual... Uh, when Tito and Mito try to feed the bird, it leaves the cage and flies away. And then the story ends. Whoa. What about the moral then? It changes. Now the message is that just when you think you found happiness, you'll lose it again. I thought about that for a while, but in the end, it didn't change how I felt. I don't know what they intended it to mean when they gave it to me, but I decided how I was going to look at it. It means that happiness is something you should always be looking for. And it's only when you're pursuing happiness that you're truly happy. You know, Sigma, I think you might be Tiltil. What? You know, the boy who the old lady asked to find the bluebird on Christmas Eve. What are you trying to say? Can I ask you something? Um, sure. Where did you find Alice? What does that have to do with anything? Just answer me. Where did you find Alice? Room two in the crew quarters. Where were you before that? I was in the lounge. That was after we split up to go look for Alice. Uh, the first place I went was the lounge. So you went from the lounge to the crew quarters, where you found Alice, and then you rushed her to the infirmary, right? Yeah. Okay, tell me this then. How do you know about the garden? Just now you said you'd come here when you were looking for Alice, didn't you? That doesn't make any sense. There wouldn't have been any time for you to visit the garden while you were looking for Alice. So tell me, Sigma, how do you know about this place? Well, um, I didn't know what to say. I couldn't even explain it to myself. Uh, why had I told her I knew about the garden? Uh, why had I told her I'd been there before? Sigma? always been here? Oh, uh, what? See, it would make so much sense if you were. That would explain why you knew about the garden, and it would explain that cut on your left hand. <laughs> Damn. So you did see it, huh? Yes. I've been told that robots these days have what's called Artificial Biological Tissue, or ABT, on top of a metal skeleton. Just like the golems. It makes them look almost exactly like a human. And ABT uses this white liquid instead of blood. For some reason, when Luna had called me a robot, it hadn't really phased me. Maybe because it was just so... out there. It didn't sound like a real possibility. It sounded more like a theory you'd get from someone in a nut house. Still... My hand was still oozing white liquid. Was I really a robot? No. That was impossible. I needed to stop doing that. Questioning myself so much was giving me heart palpitations. Luna, aren't you a little scared? Scared? Why would I be scared? Well, let's say I am a robot. Uh, that means there's a pretty good chance Zero's pulling my strings. That would make me your enemy. Oh, I guess so. Well, even if you were, I wouldn't be scared. Why not? Hmm. Maybe because you're a robot. Huh? Have you ever heard of the three laws of robotics? 
They were a set of rules created by the science fiction author Isaac Asimov that he used in several of his stories. And it's just uh, nice that they used uh, the picture of Gollum from Path 1 to illustrate this point. Rule 1. A robot may not injure a human being or through an action allow a human being to come to harm. Rule 2. A robot must obey any orders given to it by human beings, except when such orders would conflict with the first law. Rule 3. A robot must protect its own existence for as long as such protection does not conflict with the first or second laws. Oh yeah, I've heard those before. That's just an ideal though. Uh, you can work toward that, but I don't think you could ever actually achieve it. I mean, depending on how you program them, robots could do pretty much whatever they wanted to. Yes, you're right. But I believe in them. In you. However you're programmed, I don't think you'd break any of the three laws. A robot without the three laws is just a bunch of metal and plastic. That's not you. You have a heart. You're a good person. It's in your eyes. I guess I'm just kind of assuming you're a robot. There's still a chance you're not. We should run some tests. Tests? Yes. Um, how? Well, the Adam should be able to tell us. Oh yeah, that thing in the infirmary. I heard the crunch of dried leaves behind us. But when I turned, there was nothing. Uh, who is it? Is, is someone there? Just me. Bye? Sorry, but can you guys come over here? I need you to see something. What's going on? Luna and I looked at one another, shrugged, and stepped into the bushes. Welcome. What? How long have you been here? I just got here a little while ago. Did you hear what we were saying? No. Were you talking about something you didn't want me to know about? Whatever. Just have a look at this. I followed the line of her finger. And I found the number one bomb! Shit. This... This is... An antimatter bomb. Exactly. I'm pretty sure someone didn't move it here from the crew quarters. Because of the number one on it, right? In fact... I'm pretty sure it's an entirely different bomb. Look at the number on the side. It says one. And the one in the crew quarters said three, right? Then that must mean... Shit. <laughs> then there's no question, huh? I've got more good news. Just think about the numbers for a moment. You're saying there's a two bomb out there somewhere? Can't be sure, but it does seem pretty likely. Damn it. That means we're dealing with a combined explosive power equal to three tons of TNT. Yeah. Who planted them? Was it you guys? I mean, you've been in here quite a while. Hey, don't give me that. You're way more suspicious than we are. What you, were you doing in the bushes anyway? Well, uh, I was taking a walk. Taking a walk? You really think I'm gonna buy that? Fine. You got me. I heard you two were off talking in secret. So I got curious and went back to the Floor A warehouse. Of course you weren't there. That seemed pretty suspicious to me, so I headed here. And just as I'd suspected, there you were, talking on the bench. I snuck up from behind so you wouldn't notice me. Then, just as I was getting close enough to hear, I found the bomb. So, believe me now. So, who planted the bomb? Honestly, it could have been any one of us. Anybody could have come here while we were all looking for Alice. We need to tell everyone about this then. Yeah, you're right. Let's head back to the infirmary. Oh boy. Everyone else was already there when we arrived. Clover and Tamiochi, Candio, and of course Alice and Quark. 
Both seem to be sleeping peacefully. You'd never think to look at them that they'd been completely insane not lo so long ago. Alright, everybody, listen up. I told them how we found the number one bomb in the garden. And how, judging by the numbering on the two bombs we found so far, there was probably a number two bomb out there somewhere, too. Oh, this is bad. What are we going to do? Well, I think Alice mentioned something. There should be an emergency deactivation password. If you enter that password, the device should, well, deactivate. You see it right here. There's a port. If we can find the password input device, we just connected here. Then we can enter the password. So if we have the password, we can deactivate them? Oh, whoa, hold on a second. That's great and all, but we need that password input device she was talking about. Without that, we're still boned even if we did have the password. Yeah. That's why I want all of you to let me search you. I beg your pardon? You heard me. Chances are whoever planted those bombs is in this room. There's also a good chance they've also got the device we need to deactivate the bombs. So you're planning to search us for it? Exactly. But... No buts. If you refuse, then I'll assume it's because you've got it and you planted the bombs. Unless you want that, I suggest you cooperate. Clear? Good. Now who's going to be first? Hmm? Wait. Huh? You only need to search one person. What? Why? Because I figured out who did it. I... I know who did it. The words were out of my mouth before I'd even realized I was saying them. How can you... There's no way. Yeah. I met Fi's gaze and nodded, then turned away. I know who set the bombs. That person... And he does the Ace Attorney point! <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's probably one of the best moments of the game, in my opinion. That person is you, Dio! Come on, what is this? Are you high? Well, we're about to find out. Sorry, Kay, but could you hold him down? Uh, uh, well... It's on him, I promise. Knock it off, Sigma! You're doing this all backwards. So, this isn't a court. Besides, all we want is to know who set the bombs. And why are you getting so worked up anyway? If you're innocent, then a search will show that and I'll look like an idiot. Nice try, but that's some bullshit totalitarian logic. I don't think so. What are you even basing this on? How do you know I set the bombs? Because... Just spit it out! I know about the Myrmidons. The Myrmidons? What? I beg your pardon? No! How do you know that, Sigma? Oh, that's not all I know. I know about Free the Soul, and I know about Brother. What the hell are you talking about? I can tell you the details later. But there's no question that you were the one who set up the bombs! Who the fuck do you think you are? None of that has anything to do with me. I don't know who the Myrmidons are, and I don't know what Free the Soul is, and I certainly don't know anything about some old fart called Brother. Heh. <laughs> oh, Dio. Tell me, how does that foot taste? Who the Myrmidons are? I don't recall saying the Myrmidons were people. And what about Brother? How would you know his age if I hadn't said anything besides his name? Uh. Wait, so... he's left? But... but that means he's a terrorist! A terrorist? Oh dear. Left? <laughs> well, looks like I won't be able to talk my way out of this one. Seriously though, when did we get so famous? 
Myrmidons aren't supposed to be something anybody knows about, let alone you two jokers. Okay, you got me. Yes, I'm the leader of the Myrmidons. My real name is Left. I was sent here to stop Zero Senior's AB plan. That's why I planted the bombs. If it looked like the plan might actually succeed, I was supposed to blow this whole place sky high. AB plan? What's that? Oh, well, looks like you don't know everything after all. I should have been more careful. Then again, it's not like it really matters. After all, you're gonna die here. What? God damn it, no! I left toward him. Well there. <laughs> Better not come any closer. You think I'm not prepared for this? Take one step and it'll be your last. Then that thing you're holding. It's the detonator. Yeah, I guess it is. Now back the fuck off! Dio, please calm down! If you press that button, you'll die too! So? Believe me, there's plenty more where this came from. What? Now that we've cleared that, back off! Come on, move it! Go, go, go! We had no choice. Slowly, carefully, we backed away. All of us except for one. Temiochi. Hey, Grandpa, your hearing gone? I set back off. No. <sighs> you. I'm not screwing around here. I can see that. So why don't you do it? Go ahead. Press that button. What? Temiochi? Oh, something wrong? Hurry it up. I'm not getting any younger. Oh. Do I sense hesitation? What's the matter, Dio? Scared? Well... <laughs> you son of a bitch. <laughs> so you were just bluffing. Not bluffing, goddammit. You hear me? I'll do it. Oh, I'm sure you will. But there's really something I should tell you. See that detonator you're holding? It's a fake. What? For just an instant, Dio's eyes twitched down to the device in his hand. That was all the opening Tandy Miyochi needed. Yeah! He cried out as he leapt through the air. Tamiochi's leg shot out, knocking the detonator from Dio's hand. Uh oh. Shit! Not good! What happened? Uh, the detonator! He doesn't have it anymore! What? What's happening? There's a red light on it now. <laughs> oh, you really fucked up, Tenmyoji. This is what happens when you try to show off. What? I'm sorry. Uh, this is my fault. I didn't have time to tell you how it worked. What are you saying? The detonator isn't supposed to be separated from Dio. If it is, then the timer on the bombs automatically activates. Damn, how much do you know? Fine, whatever. Well, he's right. If that thing ever gets more than a meter away from me, it activates. When it does, it starts the timers on all the bombs. So thanks to this old fart, you get to try and defuse a bunch of activated bombs on a countdown. You can go ahead and destroy the detonator if you want. Once the timers have been activated, they'll go off anyway. How long do we have? When do they explode? You should know, Sigma. Why don't you tell her? 30 minutes. Th 30 minutes?! That's crazy! Yeah. How do we stop them? Uh, the emergency deactivation passwords. None of us know them, though. Right. None of us know. But there's someone who does, isn't there? <laughs> okay, okay. I'll give you one, since I'm such a swell guy. The password for bomb number two is... E-Q-D-D-Y-R-N-T-K. Alright, so remember this password for bomb number two. E-Q-D-D-Y-R... NTK. And with that, we pretty much have all the codes necessary for all the bombs, what it looks like. Unless there's a number four bomb there somewhere. Oh, wait! Uh, 
in the Alice ending, Dio only mentioned those four bombs, so I think we got all the codes to the bombs. We just need the password to input device. Bomb number two. But we haven't found that one yet. Uh oh. Oh. Well, my mistake. Must have slipped my mind. Well, there's nothing you could do anyway. You don't have the input device. Really, it'll be much easier if you all just give up. Where's the input device? Oh gosh, I wonder. Where did you put the number two bomb? Shoot, you know, I, I just can't remember. You son of a bitch. Anyway, I think it's time for me to be moving on. Moving on? To where? What, I have to explain everything? To the next world, of course. No! Wait! I threw myself toward Dio and wrapped my hand around his wrist, slamming it to the floor. He struggled, but I put all my weight on it and kept his arm pinned. Shit! Let go of me, goddammit! Get off of me! Let me go! He continued to struggle, but I wasn't going to let him go. I shifted my weight to free one of my hands and started trying to prize his open. Hey! Hey! I'm not fucking around, alright? Let go of my goddamn arm! By then, the others had run over and piled up the deal along with me. Even then, he refused to stop. With increasing desperation, he tried to get the hand I had grabbed to his mouth. We don't have a choice. Luna, go get the Sokoril. No! If we put him to sleep, we can't get what we need out of him! You think I don't know that? What other choice do we have? Every minute we spend wrestling this prick is a minute we don't have to deal with those bombs. We don't have time for this! Ugh! Shit! What are you doing, Luna? Go! Right! Okay, I've got it. I'm ready when you are. Do whatever you want to me, you fucking cowards! You're still gonna die! Go ahead, tell yourself you can fix it. Run around like idiots before you get blown to atoms. Serves you fucking right! You're gonna burn! Oh, for God's sake! Luna, shut him up! Right, here goes. Dio, shut up. Up. <sighs> As I began to climb off of him, I finally pried Dio's hand open. There it was, just what I'd expected. A small, unassuming capsule. I didn't know what was in it exactly, but it was undoubtedly some kind of poison. I stumbled toward the sink and tossed it into the drain. How much time do I have left? About 20 minutes or so, I think. And how much time until the white doors open? The same. So, what do we do? Oh, we put in those passwords and stop the bombs. We searched Dio, but he doesn't have anything that might be the input device. Hmm. Well, only one thing to do then. And that is? We split up and find it. Unless any of you have another suggestion. A dismal silence filled the room. Even though no one spoke, I could see despair on every face. All right. No point sitting around. Until those things actually go off, we've still got a chance. Sigma, you come with me. We're going to have to go look at the number three bomb. See if the timer really has started or not. Right. All the rest of you, listen up. I want you to take Alice, Quark, and Dio to the Floor B warehouse. What? Why there? Just listen. Worst case scenario, we'll open the white doors and go through them to... wherever they go. Maybe we'll get lucky. I doubt it. Understood. We will take them to the Floor B warehouse. Once we've done so, we will begin to search for the input device in the number two bomb. Good. Thanks. Okay, we don't have much time left. Now get moving. Sigma, you're with me. 
Five turns without waiting and head for the door. Before I could blink, she was gone. I gave everyone else in the infirmary a quick thumbs up and a shaky smile, then hurried after her. Alright, so let's see if the timer really had started or not. Hmm. The light's flashing. I guess the countdown has started. So, what are we going to do? Without a way to enter the passwords, we're screwed. Right. We'll just have to split up and look for it. I'll look around here. You go check somewhere else. Okay. If we get to T-minus five minutes, then we'll meet back at the Floor B warehouse. Got it? I wasn't sure what to say, if we hadn't found it by then. Was there really any point in meeting up again? What's with that look? Don't worry. We'll figure it out, I promise. You know what they say. Swimsuits never quit. What? Uh, no, that's not... Uh, that's not a thing. And it doesn't make any sense. Besides, why the hell are you cracking jokes right now? I'm just, um... Trying to show you that life is still worth living. After all, if you quit now, there goes any possibility of you ever seeing me in a swimsuit. Oh, I see. Well, I admit I am a bit, bit curious. All right. Looks like we're on the same page. Hey, get moving. We don't have time to stand around. Fine. <laughs> Be careful, all right? I checked the time on my bracelet as I headed out of the crew course and into the hallway. It wasn't good news. Damn. Only 15 minutes. I need to hurry. I broke into a run. And back to the infirmary again. Before long, I found myself in front of the infirmary. All too often, what you're looking for is right in front of you. We spent a lot of time in the infirmary, so it seemed kind of fitting somehow that it might have been there all along. Or maybe Dio dropped it there recently. There was no way to know. And in any event, I had to start looking somewhere. Luna. Oh, you're still here? Yes. The others are taking the people who are asleep to the white doors. I chose to stay here. I thought you might come back. Why? Because the atom is here. I thought you might want to use it. Isn't that why you're here? Uh, what? I mean, yeah, I want to know what's going on with me. It's driving me nuts. Hell, I feel sick. But this isn't the time for that. Uh, being a robot isn't going to be a lot if I die anyway. Oh, why did you come here then? Isn't that obvious? I'm trying to find that input thing so we can turn off the bombs. Really? Yes. Uh, why would I lie? I see. I seem to have made a mistake. I knew you couldn't use the atom without me. So I stayed behind because I thought I might be able to help. I guess I shouldn't have done that. I'm sorry. Goodbye. She turned and headed toward the exit. Uh, wait! I couldn't just let her leave like that. I sighed. Uh, how long would it take? Not more than five minutes or so. Are you sure? Uh, only five minutes? Yes. Okay. Let's do it. Analyze my body. Yeah, I have to know what's up. I lay down on the table. Luna picked up the atom scanner and began to run it across me, slowly and methodically. In a few minutes, she was finished. That's it. You can get up now. I sat up and hopped off the table. The screen was already starting to show my results. So, uh, what does it say? 
My eyes were glued to her face, looking for any sign of what the answer might be. She studied the readout for several long seconds before replying. Well... It says you're not a robot. You're human. I let a breath I hadn't realized I'd been holding. My relief didn't last long. But... your body isn't... entirely human. What? You're part machine. Wait, uh, what are you saying? Look here. The structure of the bones in your arms isn't anything close to human. They're made out of a titanium alloy. On top of that skeleton is artificial biological tissue. It's also called ABT. Your arms are... cybernetic. What? What does that mean? Cybernetic? It means a mechanical system that interfaces with a biological one. You see all these root-like things around the titanium bones? Those are artificial nerves. They're probably connected to your own nerves, which is how you can move your arms. I imagine they allow you to feel things through your arms too. What? No, this is ridiculous. I think replacing my arms with robot ones is something I'd remember. And I know they weren't always like this. When I was a kid, I broke my arm and they took an x-ray of it. The doctor told me I had really thick bones and that I must have done something pretty insane to break them. When the hell did this happen? Why did somebody replace my arms? Wait. Okay, let's say you're right and my arms are cybernetic. Wouldn't that mean I don't have to worry about the bracelet going off? No. Unfortunately, you probably do still have to worry about that. Why? The cybernetic arms are made to function just like real arms, which means they interface with the rest of your body, which means that anything injected into them is spread to the rest of your body. How do you know that? I just... do. That's not an answer! Yes, you're right. But not everything has an answer. There are some things you just can't explain. What? Don't you know how that feels? How did you know about the garden? How did you know that Dio planted the bombs? Uh... That's... um... I'm sorry, Sigma. I wish we could talk some more, but our time is up. Time... I pressed the buttons on my bracelet and felt my stomach drop. One... minute. We've only got a minute left. Sigma, there's one last thing. I was given very specific instructions. I shuddered. Not because I was scared of what was about to happen. Because I was scared of Luna. She was calm, unnaturally uh, so, like a machine with a human face. We were about to die. How could she be so calm? Please pay attention. This is very important. You must be sure to remember it. Remember? I was about to die. How was I supposed to remember anything? Oh gee, that sounds so familiar, doesn't it? Yeah, we heard this exact same speech pretty much. When uh, K told us the password, pretty much. Should you encounter a two-headed lion devouring the sun, <laughs> remember G T F D M L zero one six. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, I get that. That's the uh, ID number. Yeah, for the two-headed uh, lion in the sun. I get that, but uh, what's really striking uh, to me is the fact uh, that we have 016. Isn't that the same uh, 016 that uh, was on, uh, that Clover practically wrote uh, during the first path? Right when she and Temio to were handcuffed to the sink. How would Clover know 